Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Jörg Marcus, your friend in sales. Today's guest is David Duford. David, welcome to the show. Tell our audience a little bit more about yourself. My name is Dave Duford. I'm the owner of DavidDuford.com. Go figure. Uh, what I specialize in is training insurance agents to become top producers. So uh, if there's anything I can do to help an agent sell more policies, I'm probably doing something to try to help agents to do that. So I've got a lot of different businesses and streams of uh, income, I guess, from this business that uh, help agents do that. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what I do. In this business, you will succeed if you specialize. Tell our audience, why is this so important? I'm a uh, specialist, right? So the old adage or the old saying I use is if you look, now I don't know if it's true where you're at, but over here in America, if you have a general physician who knows a lot, a little bit about a lot, versus say a cardiac surgeon who knows a, little, a lot about a little bit, the cardiac surgeon is gonna get 10 times as much pay as a general physician. Why? Because he has a specialized knowledge that very few can replicate. So I think that concept applies to selling insurance. Uh, if you get a, a, if you master one product, it doesn't matter what it is. If you become the best at it, it's likely that your earnings are going to far outpace the people who, like you said, are generalists that don't uh, that do a little bit of everything. Let's talk about marketing and lead gen. What have you learned from top producers that is effective? So it's, it's gonna vary, like some top producers use tried and true marketing systems. Other top producers are doing unique, I would call uh, uh, unduplicatable or very, very difficult to duplicate systems. So I kind of detail a little bit of both because there's multiple ways to arrive at a high income from the insurance business. So one particular gentleman, his name is Anthony Martin. I did an interview with him. Uh, he runs a website called Choice Mutual. Uh, he has issue paid this year alone over the phone, sight unseen, simply through Google search, a million dollars in what we call here final expense plans, small face whole life policies. That's unheard of. Uh, if I take an agent who I would consider a top producer that sells the traditional model of using direct mail leads or telemarketed leads, if he's closing 200,000 in final expense premium, I consider him excellent, uh, far above 95% of the other agents. So Anthony's you know, doing that by five. Uh, there's also successful agents that, um, there's a guy named Christopher Westfall, you guys can check him out on YouTube. He sells Medicare supplements. So what that does is it covers additional or covers the gaps in coverage that Medicare offers its recipients. But with the way he's become extremely successful is that he developed a presence on YouTube uh, in 2012, 13, and 14, and kind of became a de facto authority on Medicare supplements. So people research, find it, and then jump on to what he does. So um, you can go in a lot of different directions. Uh, you know, we could talk about what's the best direction that might be worth discussing, uh, but there's a lot of different ways to see and realize a lot of production in this business. To get this clear, from what you have learned from top producers, do they sell multiple products and use several lead gen sources or they just stick to one system that works? Top producers not only sell one product almost exclusively, uh, they also market one way almost exclusively. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether that's Google search, whether that's YouTube search, um, or if you're just a run-of-the-mill productive agent selling face-to-face -face with traditional methods, you, you know, they may just use direct mail for 90% of their lead acquisition. So I find that it's, it's, it's the, the system used is simple for many of the top producers. They take one product with a big market and they scale up their advertising to serve that one market as effectively as possible. But as a single agent, you can still leverage time a little bit more by supplementing it with another lead source, right? Yeah, some of them like will supplement with telemarketed leads. I just submitted an order for an agent. He's going to do 30 direct mail leads a week and 70 telemarketing. That's fine. Um, so so it's just, it's just going to that that percentage is going to vary on the agent. But the key is to find a lead generation strategy or prospecting strategy that you can consistently execute on and ideally that it's scalable. 
because uh, in many ways in the insurance business, scale is how you increase your income. Let's talk about seminars. Talk a bit about the process. One of the best ways to develop rapport and trust is by giving value first. Okay, we do that in our sales presentation, but you can also do that in a seminar. So the nice thing about seminars, uh, what seminars provide you is credibility and almost like a celebrity status. Okay, so in the minds of the prospect, per people presume if you go up to the podium and talk in front of a group of people that you know what you're talking about. And you may feel like, oh, my knowledge isn't as great as somebody else's. That's besides the point. Um, unless you just totally blow the speaking engagement, it's likely you're going to find business from those seminars. Um, now, how to do seminars and what to do, you know, that can vary dramatically. Uh, you'll have annuity agents talk retirement strategy seminars or dinner seminars that'll last several hours. The ones that I teach my agents to do focus on final expenses. Those are 10 to 15 minutes in length. And uh, it does, it just depends on the market that you're targeting, but they're very effective. And here's the thing, there's not a lot of competition for it. Why? People are afraid to speak in front, front of people. You know, that's your defense in this, you know, whereas anybody can buy leads, not everybody can get in front of enough people consistently to do seminars. So there is, there is an edge inherently by doing those in, in the sense there's not as many others to compete with. Every single successful person that I've met all say the same thing. Business is done by relationships. What's your take on this? That is a truism of this insurance business. The one thing I can teach an insurance agent is you know, a lot of people get in this business. They need to make money yesterday. I get it. You know, we want to make sales. That's how we stay in the business. But there are relationships that you can form that will pay wonderfully throughout a, a life or a career. Uh, I know one agent in particular, his name is Lee. He lives in California. He's a 30 year veteran in the business uh, in his sixties. And all he does now, every single morning, he pulls out copies of his old applications he wrote on clients five, 10, 20, even 30 years ago. And he calls them up, checks in on them, see how they're doing, see if there needs to be any beneficiary changes, just does some basic service work. And guess what? Guy gets business all the time. First of all, he's getting the term uh, conversion options because a lot of these people bought term, maybe they didn't invest the difference. And so now they need a permanent plan because there's still some need. Well, he's already got it because he stayed in touch, you know? And because he's doing this extra work, he's getting referrals sent to him naturally. And those are always better buyers that aren't nearly as uh, flippant as maybe somebody who just sends a lead in, a uh, better quality type of client. So yeah, relationships are everything. And Ben Feldman even, um, he made a, what was his number? I think he made half of his total lifetime income after age 65, I think. So why? Because all of his business owners, just like him, were hitting retirement age and needed estate plan. So it was because of those early relationships he was able to get it. Some people, when they get into the insurance business, they usually come out of some business that fail. So let's address the big elephant in the room and talk a bit about should they go part-time or should, should they go all in? What's your take on this? So, so here's the thing. You'll get various responses from different people in this business, but I started this business part-time. Why? Because I had a business, not a successful one, but it did make me money. And I didn't want to give it up for the chance, but not the guarantee that I could do better and, and final expense in this case. So what did I do? So I sold final expense part-time while I kept my biz other business open. That way I know I was still continually getting paid and uh, I could spend time testing this concept out if the insurance business is going to work for me. Lo and behold, it did. Six months later, I closed the business down and went into final expense. So here's the thing, what I don't want happening with agents is to enter this business unprepared uh, if they don't have the capital to buy leads, if that's part of their business model. Um, and, but they force their hand in order to do it, the odds are high they're gonna fail and they'll leave this business with a bad taste in their mouth. Um, there's a lot of reasons why agents fail. One of them is not having enough money to pay for expenses, especially their lead expenses. 
Um, and having, or at least starting final expense on a part-time basis, I believe, or any insurance sales, if you keep your full-time job, there's less stress and performance. You know, you just go out, run your appointments, do what you can. But if it's not the end of the world, you're not going to miss your mortgage payment if you don't close, you know, all of your appointments. Um, it allows you room to breathe, learn, room to learn the business model. And the great thing is, hey, after six or 12 months, you can even be more confident in leaving your job so that you can go full time in the insurance sales because you've created a track record that you've seen that you could get results in. For me, I just went all in. I reckon that if I had more time available, I could double down on my efforts to close more contracts. But this is my view on the subject. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there's something to say about going all in for sure. I try to say to agents, you have to have a full-time mentality on a part-time basis, you know, because part of going all in means you're going to give everything that you can. You're going to burn the, the bridges, if you will, behind you. There's no going back and there's value in that. But my case being an example and many others I've dealt with, it's, it is possible to transition slowly as long as you're disciplined, as long as you, you treat your, your insurance business as a business, not just a casual endeavor. I see a lot of people struggling because they don't know their target base well. Let's address this a bit. I teach agents to sell final expense, which is generally sold to people 60 and older. Well, over here in the States, if you're 60 and older, likelihood is pretty high you have a fixed pension. You get what we call social security. Well, there's a whole mentality to a senior that gets one check a month that you've got to learn to understand and appreciate. And it can go a long way to earning their trust when you understand what that's like. So, uh, or just, you know, various issues of that seniors go through getting older, having friends and family die and, and understanding that, that unique life perspective. So yeah, the more you can walk a mile in the shoes of your prospects, the better you're going to do selling it, whatever it is that you're selling. In my life insurance business, I use referrals. What about you? I'll admittedly say I never really did much in my business because where I was in my business, I could just scale up my lead flow higher. And I almost treat my insurance sales business like an assembly line. You know, I'm going to run 10, 15 appointments a day, four days a week. And I got to be in these particular areas to stay consolidated and tight. So I just never bother to ask for referrals. However, um, referrals are something you should probably do, especially if you're working a, a, a business model that you don't get as much volume from. Uh, if you're writing larger cases, uh, if you're in more of the advanced markets, yeah, some, some people, the only way you can reach them is through referrals. They don't reply to mailers or telemarketing or traditional advertising. They get advice from friends and family on who's the go-to person. So, and those tend to be the best prospects. They're not solicited as much because there's kind of that, it's difficult to get to them. So yeah, referrals, I agree, are, are really good. Top salespeople versus recruiting to get more sales done. What's your take on this? So I think it's going to vary by the individual. Some people are better at just selling insurance and others are more suited towards recruiting. The worst thing you can have is somebody who sells insurance really well and is pressured into a management role. And now they've got to try to motivate other people to work and they've got to start thinking differently than typically this hunter type of, of, of approach to selling. And a lot of managers do not make it that are really good producers and they realize they make more money and are happier even when they go back to the personal production world. So for me personally, um, I'm not patting myself on the back here, but I am a good producer, but I'm also a good manager and recruiter and trainer. And, um, but I love the second one more than producing. I love to train and recruit and coach and develop agents. And I'm playing to my strengths. I didn't know that when I first got in. I had a lot of um, apprehension. You know, do I want to deal with agents and their complaints and their worries? And it wasn't nearly as bad as I made it out in my mind. So it worked well for me. And I believe one of the benefits to agency ownership is that in many cases, not always, but in many cases, 
you can scale your income. You can scale your ability to earn and, and have a more open, free time of, uh, or li uh, open lifestyle in the sense that you're not necessarily got to work every single evening like some insurance agents do. So there's a semblance of um, control over your schedule and I think the opportunity for more income. So, I mean, agency growth is, is certainly something for the right people is, is a good thing. Using social media to increase the deal flow for your insurance business. Talk about your experience doing this for a while. If you play the social media game, you got to understand that it's a long-term strategy. Uh, I've done, for example, I've done YouTube videos, training agents on how to sell insurance since 2014. I really didn't get a lot of traction until 2017. And then really it wasn't until a year ago that my total view counts and viewership dramatically jumped. I probably had a 30% month over month increase, if not more. And, and, and I think part of the reason is that social media, it depends on social media, but YouTube rewards consistency. It rewards, you know, uh, uh, producers that produce a lot of content on a consistent basis and um, wants, they want to keep you on the platform, right? So they put that kind of content out that's good and people enjoy and there's metrics to show it. But it's not an overnight thing. I think that's the key thing, point I'm trying to make. But if you're, let's say you don't want to do video, if you're on Facebook or Instagram or whatever you're using, is, is figure out a way to create useful, uh, helpful, funny, entertaining, all of that's good content and do it on a consistent basis. Expect nothing from it. Uh, you, just, you just go out, tell people what you're doing or show them value, explain products or, or concepts. Don't be pushy. Don't you know, be a salesman just be an educator. And, and trust me, people will be watching you, whether you're doing this to recruit agents or to find prospects, people will watch from the sidelines to, to discern the process and what you're doing. And some of those people will step forward voluntarily and say, yes, I do need to do this. Or this is something that interests me, but only because you put the time in and the effort to establish yourself as the expert in a in a useful way, not in a pushy way. You know, at first I was doing one video a week, two videos a week. I do like seven to 10 now, you know, and, and Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about this. Um, a great person to uh, rely on for some perspective on social media, no BS type of perspective. Um, he thinks that it's quantity over quality. And in fact, the quantity of content improves the quality of the content. I mean, that, and, that, and that's, then that's true. Uh, I've done a thousand plus videos since I've started. You can go look at my old ones. We were, in fact, my wife and I were watching some and we just laughed at how goofy I was. But, you know, the only way you get better is if you keep doing it and figure out, well, okay, what can I do better and then improve? If you just do one a week or write one article or what, you just, you don't get as better or as fast, better as fast as you could. So I'm all about doing, going all in and going heavy on it because you'll get better anyway and probably see success a little faster. Hire first, choose later. What does this tell you about the insurance industry? Hire them in masses, train them in classes, sell all their friends and family and fire their asses. <laughs> Why is this the case? Well, I mean, I can speculate. You probably have heard of Art Williams, A.O. Williams. Uh, if you haven't read any of his books, Coach is a really good book. It tells how he built his, essentially his empire in the term insurance world. But um, What happened some, sometime in the 70s and 80s, the insurance world realized that the multi-level marketing mentality was, was a, a good strategy for the top of the pyramid, if you will. And when I say multi-level marketing strategy, I mean the process or the concept that if you've got a pulse, we'll hire you. If you can fog this mirror, you're, you're approved to join. But the problem with that is you guys know if you've ever been pitched on multi-level marketing to join, it's like, Well, first of all, if you're brand new to this business and you're selling a product that's serious, like insurance, it's, it's one of the few things that are there when a person dies that people appreciate. Why would I want to learn from somebody that has no track record or, or, or experience in the business or marginal amount? Right. And, and then what happens is, is that the, 
instead of focusing on skill development and instead of focusing on, on producer growth and improvement from a technical standpoint to sell more policies, so many of these organizations, they, uh, we call it, you know, uh, you know, spread the Kool-Aid, right? So everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid and meaning that everybody's, it's almost like a cult in some of these organizations where it's all about not results, but getting high on this concept of, you know, living this great lifestyle, despite the fact that you don't have the skills in order to actually do it. So this is a big turnoff to a lot of people, understandably. The key thing is to find an organization that doesn't operate that way. I, I strive not to be hypey and multi-level marketing oriented because it scares away a lot of good people. This is a great business to be in. And you can be successful in it without having to feel like I got to recruit everybody I see. So uh, yeah, you can tell my opinion on it. I'm not hot on that model. It does work for the top, but in so many people in the middle just never get traction. They never get the results that they want out of the business. Let's talk about the books that you wrote about this. So this is the first one here. Since you've asked, I'll mention it's called The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. First book I wrote. Um, you know, when I got into the recruitment business, you know, I thought of, well, how can I differentiate myself from the average agency that recruits everybody that they see? And, and we're living in a world now where, where the best way to differentiate yourself is on how can you demonstrate your knowledge without expectation of anything in return? How can you help people? How can you show people that? How can you sincerely do that? And I looked around at different ideas and I noticed there wasn't really a popular, a uh, helpful book that uh, people could dive into to learn the craft of selling, in this case, final expense. So I put it together, it took me a couple of years, I finished half of it, then forgot about it for a year and then I finished the rest of it, and finally got it published. And the nice thing as, as a recruiter, what this does is, look, I'm the guy who wrote the book on this. I don't say that arrogantly, but that's what people think, right? Because I am. You know, uh, people have a perceived, whether it's wrong, right or wrong, that if you have a, if you wrote the book on a subject matter, you are an expert, okay? You're going to stand above another guy that's just random on the street. Um, a lot of annuity agents here in the States, they, they offer free books that they've written, really just ghost written, but the concept is the same. Hey, let me share, let me sell you on myself as being the person you need to deal with. So. The books allow me to position myself differently than other recruiters. Um, it's a way for me to give back and help people that maybe not ever join my organization. And uh, it just develops that influence or goal that I have uh, in my business. Advice to your younger self, what would you say? Uh, shut up and work, focus. Um, I don't know, I don't really have much regrets. I guess that's part of that, that kind of question. Be self-analytical, uh, be, be willing to just think about why you do the things that you do. Uh, I failed out of final expense sales when I first started after a year. And the reason I did is because I didn't have the, the character really to stay consistent, the one craft or one approach long enough to get through the hard points. And that's more difficult than it looks like from the outside looking in. But that is something I needed to overcome. And so there's always look at your problems as growth opportunities. Uh, you can learn new skills, you can do better. But um, yeah, the young me, I don't know. I'm, I don't have any real regrets. So maybe that's a, a good enough one. Work harder. For the future, where do you see yourself and your business going? So, you know, I started as a final expense trainer and by natural processes, I felt as if my perception in the business was insurance sales training in general. So my business, my main line of business is recruiting agents, uh, helping them become top producers. And then I, my interest in the business is on overrides. I make a percentage of each sale my client, my agents do. So being a position as an influencer now is that I have a voice to help agents that maybe are struggling uh, and put them into a sales and marketing system. So the way I see my business going is that we've expanded beyond just final expense. We're doing other senior 
citizen products like annuities, um, Medicare products, and it allows me to expand my recruiting volume. And then incidentally, I have uh, educated, effective, trained agents in each of those categories that can train those people to do that. So it's kind of like a joint venture opportunity with me. So my goal is just to keep doing that. I, I enjoy what I do. Um, I work from home. You can see the old spare office here. I'm around the house. Uh, I make a great income. Uh, you know, it's worked out great. And, you know, I'm just happy with the way things are and just keep working this particular pro pro process. And finally, where can people get a hold of you if they want to know more about you? The easiest way is to go to my website. It's my name, DavidDufour.com. If you're interested in any of the books that I do, any of the programs that I offer, you'll see links in the navigation bar on the website. It's probably the best thing to do. So check it out. Come say hi. You can always send me a message. I reply to every message personally. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. David was a wonderful guest. By the way, if you like this type of content, go to byudigital.com slash book and you will have an offer there for my first book and it talks about business principles and sales from my earlier entrepreneurial ventures and some of the things that I'm doing right now that are working well. This all comes of a process of trial and error. So this is like a compilation of years and years and years of failures that you have no idea and now are compiled in a 430 two page book. So I hope you enjoyed the book. I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to share and subscribe to the podcast. You'll have it available on every single platform and I'll see you next week.